one player in control of the job. So how do you manage a club that's tough in trouble? Do you come into training and get on their case for a moment, or are you quite open and keep the laughter going? How, what's the dynamic? <laughs> They're not the only two options, you know. It's not <laughs> jokes and giggles or me coming in, throwing my significant weight around. Um, I, I'm the same, mate. doesn't matter, you know. I'm hoping that when people see me, they don't know where we are, what position we are, you know. And uh, like I said, yeah, at Celtic, you know, we we were on top for a very long time. But, you know, at the beginning when we were on top, when we weren't on top, um, you know, I don't think people saw anything different in my demeanour and... I don't think they will. I think I, it's one thing I, I, I do. It's not about sort of staying, you know, kind of level-headed or getting carried away with either thing. It's just that, you know, my role in that context is to to be the one thing that people can sort of rely upon to be consistent in that I have one objective all the time is how can we be better? And, and when that's your objective, it doesn't really matter where you are on the table or kind of, you know, what... Um, what again? What the outside noise may may and may or may not be doing. It's about you know the players and the staff and everyone involved with the football club. You know, looking at me, and seeing that you know what I'm. I come in every day. The one thing I do is I come in every day, buzzing about doing what I'm doing, and um, you know that's that's the kind of demeanour I have, uh, you know, consistently. Played the song after the tunnel, which is pretty much. Is that becoming a problem with some of the dressing room? And, and who is the, the DJ? Oh, mate, that's well, I've got no, I, no idea. And I stay out of the dressing room partly because of the music choices of the players. Um, and you know, yeah, most most clubs want to turn their grounds into a fortress. Ours is becoming a nightclub, mate. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. Whatever makes people happy, that's fine. <laughs> I've got no idea, mate. No idea, mate. You know, is it even called a DJ these days, mate? Who knows? No, so I think you're on my boat, so we'd stay away from that subject. Uh, Gary? Can I ask you about um, Sicario, Ange? Um, you find yourself in some of the draws where you don't like to Um, yeah, I don't know. Hard for me to say. You know, I, I've never sort of kind of... I just sometimes think we stereotype people and, and I've certainly been one that's tried to break that kind of notion that because a certain player or certain individuals come from a certain place, they're going to struggle. I think they're all individuals, you know, and I, that's why I've always recruited from different parts of the world and not worried about them. I mean, I, well, again, you know, my Celtic experience of people saying, well, players from Japan will find it hard to adjust. And about. Because I don't look at it as a player from Japan. I don't look at Vic as a, as a goalkeeper from, from Italy. I, I saw Vic as a, as a person, A, as a goalkeeper who I thought had outstanding attributes. And after speaking to him just as a person, who I go, he's going to fit in perfectly because he didn't come here, you know, he hasn't come here trying to prove a point or anything. He's just come here to to be the best goalkeeper he can possibly be. And he comes in every day wanting to improve. Want to, you know, he's got great um, self-belief, but at the same time, a humility around him that he, you know, he wants to work hard every day. You know, he's in here every day. You, if we have a day off, Vic's the one player that's still coming in every day to do something. And when you have people like that, um, coupled with his attributes as a goalkeeper, well, then I think they give themselves a good chance to be successful and, and to fit in <coughs> you know, comfortably. and. I think it's a great environment for him. You know, Birchie, Rob Birchie, our goalkeeping coach, he's is, is, got a great relationship with him. That's important, I think, for, for that position because that's probably the one position where, you know, that one-on-one -on -one relationship with a goalkeeping coach is important. And to be honest, that was the one question that Vic asked me before he signed, you know, who a goalkeeping coach was going to be because he knew that was going to be important. And I think Rob's created a great environment. You know, I've said before, you know, Vic's got the, the fortune of training with guys like Fraser. He's just unbelievable training. His, his attitude, his work ethic, um, his quality, you know, I think raises, um, you know, Vic's um, quality as well. We've got, you know, young Brandon Austin who's, who's also improving all the time. And then he's got 
literally a legend of the club and one of the greatest goalkeepers ever beside him as well. So it's a great environment for him. But a lot of it's driven by him wanting to be better. And, and like I said, so I don't, you know, when we, when we signed him, I wasn't looking, you know, it's a risk because he's a foreign goalkeeper. I, I just don't look at it that way. I just look at it, well, OK, he's a person that I think was going to fit in really well with us. No, like, uh, again, I think it was really important for us. Um, I think Vic was a kind of the first one. We saw. It was kind of my priority when it came to so if we're going to sign a keeper, we need to do it early. You know, we need to get him in pre-season. We need to say those kind of things. You know, I think it was the West Ham game or pre-season where, you know, we conceded a couple of goals. He didn't really have any saves to make and, you know, to build confidence for goalkeepers, you want to make saves and, and you kind of... But he worked through that process because we went through the whole of pre-season with him and I think that was really important for us. I think it would have been more of a challenge for him if we signed him on the eve of the, the season, you know, and um, you know, the club was great in, in ensuring we got him in early and things like I said, so I think I impressed. I think that, that helped us. Adrian? Yeah, I don't think so, mate. Um, I just, it's just, it's just the way I am. I get, I get so much satisfaction from what I do. I really enjoy what I do, like on a daily basis. There isn't a day I don't get up and not looking forward to to the day ahead. That you know, there's, you know, there's, there's no other levels of sort of satisfaction in me to get. Like that's it. You know, I'm, I'm I'm buzzing to do what I do, so there's no, there's no time, and like I said, within that context, I also understand that I'm, I have a real big responsibility to, to lead in 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 you know an organisation, players, staff, people, <coughs> to what I hope will be a you know a, a successful place, and there's got to be some reliability there in, in what they see and what they feel with me, you know, and uh, so some of it is conscious, but the other bit's just, look, I'm not skipping about the place, but I'm really happy, mate, you know, I'm, 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 I love what I do, you know, so I, I don't, you know, but so, you know, just because, like I said, I'm, it's just the way I am, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> Just again, it's 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 just enormous, you know, pride and satisfaction that we've you know because because the great bit about the end bit, the success is not what it does for me; it's what it does for others, and that's where it gives you the buzz because you look around and like I said I you know where I have had success, it's usually come off the back of you know prolonged periods of no success, and a lot of people have suffer through that and then you see them enjoy that and that's that's where you get the buzz so you know for me it's not that what it does to me personally it's what it does to others and, and that's a great motivator because you want to do that more and more in your career so um so that's kind of the way i deal with it okay paul and then finish with dan please um, do you think you've raised expectations at all around the club because that's a challenge in itself it just depends i mean i'm I didn't come here to not be successful. So, and I think you know this football club has all the you know fundamentals to to be a successful football club. So the expectations should be there. And I think part of the reason why you know there's 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 been this real desperation for a trophy here is because they feel like that's the space they should be in. So that's that is the expectations. That's the reality of it. So. Um, but again, it's not what drives me. I mean, what drives me is not raising expectations or dampening expectations. What drives me is trying to build something that will realise the aspirations that, you know, this football club has in this particular moment, you know, while I'm here. So um, what that does in terms of people's perceptions, that's 
not something that kind of concerns me too uh, too much. But this is a big club, and it should be it should be in a position to challenge for for trophies every year, in my opinion. Look, if we're in this position, uh, sort of around 36, 37, um, <laughs> you know, I, I might, I might look at the subject. We'll, we'll have a look, yeah. So, see so how we go. Okay. Done for twelve o'clock tomorrow, please. <laughs>